What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today we are talking about texturing milk without an espresso machine. More specifically, we're looking at the sub-minimal Nanofoamer. Now, I've seen a lot of Kickstarter campaigns for coffee things come and go, but very few have drawn the same amount of interest as this tool. Within the first day, they were fully funded, and as of my last check when this video was made, they are sitting at just over 4,000 backers, with roughly $265,000 pledged with 10 days to go. Now, they aren't the first option to this market. Lots of companies have tried to create a tool that'll create consistent, repeatable microfoam that just makes baristas happy, but so far, no one's been able to do it without the use of steam. But the Nanofoamer is claiming to bring that to the table, or I guess, more specifically, the coffee bar. Since the unit itself is still in its crowdfunding phase on Kickstarter, the press version they sent me doesn't have the retail box and things like that, so we can't really do an unboxing, but what we're gonna do is look at what actually goes inside the box, which kind of is what really matters anyway, so let's take a closer look. The Nanofoamer comes in a case that covers the business end. Once it's popped off, it exposes the drive shaft and the spinning impeller. The unit itself is small and feels solid, since the compact handle contains a couple batteries and the motor. Also included is two small screens, the fine and the super fine, which play a part in the density of the microfoam created. These screens snap onto the impeller and spin at 10,000 rotations per minute. The package I received also included their flow tip milk pitcher, which is capable of being placed on a stovetop to heat your milk prior to or while texturing. But now that we've had just a quick tour of the unit itself, let's see how it actually works. The Nanofoamer is designed and intended to work kind of like a steam wand. When you texture on a wand, you want to first aerate or stretch your milk. This step creates foam and should be a quick burst, maybe two to five seconds, depending on the amount of milk. From there, you want to incorporate that texture into the body of the milk. This step breaks down the foam into the microfoam and mixes that into the liquid milk itself. The final product should be smooth and look like glossy wet paint. The Nanofoamer works in pretty much the same exact order of operations, except for the fact that your milk is generally fully heated before you begin to texture it. Using some timing and a little bit of luck, you can also texture the milk while it's being heated, which can be easier or harder depending on the stovetop you're using. Also, as a side note, you should probably pick up a thermometer as it will take some of the guesswork out of the heating portion of the process. To start texturing, drop the impeller into the milk at a slight angle with the screen about halfway in and halfway out of the milk. Begin spinning at that point for a few seconds to stretch the milk and add in the air. You should see the level in the pitcher slightly rise. Then drop the impeller under the surface and continue spinning for another 15 or so seconds to blend that foam into the milk itself. Just like steaming, you should see a vortex created by the movement, and it may be easier to get that vortex by placing the impeller closer to a wall of your pitcher. If stretched and blended properly, it should be glossy and smooth and stick to the sides of your pitcher as you swirl it. When compared side by side, it should be relatively indistinguishable from the milk steamed on an espresso machine. Since I've only been using the Nanofoamer for about a week, I found myself struggling to get that consistency over and over again in terms of texture, which has resulted in a variety of pours. Some successful, and others not so much. If you're into latte art or looking to get into latte art, you likely will end up with a pitcher that you love and use on the daily, so switching to the flow tip from Nanofoamer may be a bit of a challenge. It's not a bad pitcher, it could just take some getting used to and I found it difficult to control the speed of the flow due to the very shallow run-up to the spout. It seems to be aimed more for the faster, flowy pour styles than anything else. Once I switched to my WPM handleless pitcher that I use daily and has flow characteristics that I'm very familiar with, the quality of my pours got much better. In the end, I found myself using their stovetop safe pitcher to warm the milk and then transferring it to my WPM to texture and pour. I've said it before and I'll say it again, consistently texturing milk is one of the most difficult aspects of being a barista. But for those looking to have that option without an espresso machine, the Nanofoamer is so far the best option I've tried. Even though I found myself struggling a bit to get consistent textures with the Nanofoamer over and over again, you can really just chalk that up to time and practice. After using the same machine for nearly three years, I've come to a point where I'm steaming consistently about 98% of the time. And I'm sure those who end up using the Nanofoamer as their daily driver will end up finding their groove relatively quickly. It's also very easy to clean with just a quick rinse and spin under the faucet. I can't really say I have many bad things to say about the Nanofoamer. It's a very simple tool that does the job it's intended to do. It does have a bit of a learning curve, but I think we all expect that to some extent. 
The only issue I actually experienced is that heating milk in the pitcher makes the walls of it very hot, and as you pour it out, it can burn to the sides. Otherwise, I have to say the Nanofoamer works pretty well, and it's a great option for manual espresso machine lovers who also enjoy a milk drink now and then. Depending on when you're watching this, you may still be able to snag a deal off their Kickstarter, but if you did miss the boat, they're still pretty affordable at $40 retail after the Kickstarter ends. But I think that's all I have to say on this one and the Nanofoamer. Check it out if you're interested. I'll put a link to the Kickstarter down below. Let me know if you have any questions on this or anything else coffee related. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. And a big thank you to my November Patreons, Ads, James B, Jacob P, David W, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Obo, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean Noel, Spookus, Bount Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew Horison, Bobby, Corey C, Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Testing123, Jason C, Jerry, RD, Tim, Matt, Tony, Zachary V, Tyler F, UK Espresso, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, Oliver L, Thomas B, Daniel P, Mike B, James S, Brian M, Brandon B, Tyler M, and Sebastian, and of course a big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, a big thank you to you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Prometheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Prometheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.